Hubert Gregg, good evening from me, Annandale. Well, this evening, the third in our Dance Band Days series in the BBC's Radio 2 dance season. And we recall the many years that violinist Sidney Lipton led the orchestra at Grosvenor House in Park Lane. <laughs> Sidney Lipton and one of his very first recordings with the Grosvenor House Band. The vocalist was Les Allen. A few days ago, I called Sidney in Palm Beach, Florida, where he now lives not too far from his daughter Celia, and I asked him when he first became the resident band leader at Grosvenor House. About ni- ni- 1932. Mm-hmm. My first recording in 1932, so about the end of 1931, I think. How did you get the job, if I may ask? Well, that's, that's a very interesting question. I could go on for hours about it. But I'll try to be as brief as I can, Alan. Um, I was rehearsing at that time for the Embassy Club, uh, which Jack Harris, you remember the American band leader, mm-hmm. yes. was leaving. I was approached by uh, a man we know you as Digger, a saxophone player, who was in Bill Cotton's band, and he asked me if I was available. And I said I wasn't. Nevertheless, he asked me would I come along and listen to a band rehearsing to go into a, a really first-class place in the West End. No other details and meet the musical director to, to oblige him. I met the uh, director, a very capable classical musician, who was concerned with ice ballet at the Queen's Ice Rink, as it was, Queensway, and also the Grosvenor House Ice Rink. Of course, that's, that's a great room now. He uh, implored me uh, to help him, because he knew nothing about dance music, to rehearse the band. And really, for Digger's sake, I, I agreed. I, I rehearsed the embassy, the little embassy orchestra in the morning, and the other one, which I wasn't very concerned with, in the afternoon. Eventually, the Raymond Godrey, that was his name, confided to me that it was for Grosvenor House. Now, Grosvenor House was very poorly paid at the time compared with the, the embassy club, but very tempting because of the possibility of broadcasting. And it, it also obviously meant recording. So that's how I took the job. I, I completely changed the uh, the band because it really wasn't up to uh, uh, standard. I changed the band, changed the musicians. Of course, leaving Digger in the band, and uh, we gave the audition, and uh, I got the job, and that was it. Who was Digger? What was his real name? I honestly don't know. He was always known as Digger. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he was Australian. I don't know. <laughs> it's a lovely story, anyway. <laughs>
but what are we now? Happy go lucky you and broken hearted me. Man in the moon is as sad as can be. He looks down from heaven and what does he see? Happy go lucky you and broken hearted me. You go to parties, you have your fling. I hope you never regret. You go to parties to dance and sing. I do the same to forget. And when I look at a couple in love, I watch them with envy and keep thinking of happy go lucky you. You went into into Grosvenor House, really in the in the at the beginning of or not the beginning in the middle, I suppose, of the depression. How did that affect uh, the clientele? It, it, that? It, 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 it had its effect, obviously. Um, but they, they, I suppose, they had to keep up with other hotels that were broadcasting. And there was the advertising value, and uh, so there it was. But you're, you're absolutely right. It was in the depression. We did some business, of course, but not what we what we'd like to have done. You were playing in the restaurant, of course, at Grosvenor House, weren't you? The restaurant, I also, but I also provided I was music, music and, and entertainment uh, director, and I also provided the music for most of the banquets that took place in the great room and so on. Right. What was what was that uh, restaurant like? Can you describe it? It was beautiful, and I'm very sorry. From my point of view, they destroyed it because it had a, a stand, a, a, a stage that came out and went up, you know, and they destroyed that for some reason or other. Um, it was called the Silver Room. Yes. You know, it was, uh, si you're listening to Sydney Lipton broadcasting you from the Silver Room at Grosvenor House. <laughs> like wine, I like hers, she likes mine, what a perfect combination, no wonder we're in love, she has charm, the perfect taste, I have arms that fit her waist, what a perfect combination, no wonder we're in love, she taught me one thing, love is only what you make it, and I know one thing, she can dish it out and I can take it, we both want a family, I want twins and so does she, what a perfect combination, no wonder we're in love.
recordings from the years 1932 and 33 by Sidney Lipton's Grosvenor House Band with the voice of Sam Brown in that instance. We move on to slightly later times, 1936, and this number which Sidney used as a signature tune. <laughs> arranged by pianist Billy Munn with a vocal by Chips Chippendale, and just a touch of Harry Hayes' alto sax. In fact, around this time, Sidney Lipton's band was full of star names, and I asked him to recall a few, and some others, who'd played with him over the years. Well, I sat down and made a list, you know, and obviously I can't cover them all, and I apologise for that I don't mention, but top of the list is Bill, Billy Munn. Of course. Um, I, I have a great affection for, you know, there's um, Jock Jacobson was a drummer, Max Abrams. Another drummer? Another drummer, yes. There was, um, the, the first alto sax I had was Freddie Gardner. Mm hmm Great player. Uh, Frank Weir, another one. Harry Hayes, I think, is the greatest of them all. Yeah. <laughs> and still, I see him from time to time, still. Do you really? He, yes, I do. I do give my give my kind regards. I will. Yeah. And uh, his wife, uh, Primrose Hayes, of course, she sang for me. Oh, yes, that's right. She did, indeed. Yeah. What a lovely, she was a lovely person, lovely, beautiful-looking girl. Yes, yes. Uh, there was Dave Shand, of course. Mm-hmm. Scotty. Chip Chippendale, I mustn't forget him. Yes. Who played the second alto and, and vocalist. Yes, he's still around. He's still around, isn't Yes, he? yes. My goodness, aren't we going? We're all getting on a bit. No, 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 no. Yeah. We, we don't count those years. You also had Ted Heath in the band at one stage, I was didn't going you? To say, I was just going on to that. In his book, which I haven't got, but I was told about it, he says that when he came to me, his confidence was restored. Apparently, I think he'd been a bit upset in Ambrose's band, you know? Um, there's Max Goldberg, of course. He was uh, an eccentric character, but a wonderful trumpet player. Absolutely marvellous. He's uh, recently died, as you may know. No, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm out of touch here. He was uh, living in Australia, and uh, he'd not been well for some while. I, he'd had a stroke, I think. And uh, oh I, I know he went to Australia. There's Freddie Clayton. Oh. Is he still around? No, unfortunately, he's gone as well. Dear, oh dear. Isn't it awful? Yes. yes. Um, uh, Bill Shakespeare, does that mean Nate? Uh, oh, yes, indeed. Of course, he also played for Carol, didn't he? Carol Gibbons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lovely trumpet player, but... Uh, Entirely different to, to Max, of course. And uh, 
last but I got here, but not certainly not least, George Evans. Was yeah. Very talented too. Yeah. Yes, George Evans, who not only uh, wrote many of the arrangements, sang the occasional song, and of course was the tenor sax soloist, as here in Harlem, which I think rivals Eddie Carroll's original. Through the years for recordings, Sidney Lipton used a fair number of well-known vocalists, Les Allen, Sam Brown and Chips Chippendale, we've heard. But others included Jack Plant, Cyril Grantham, Harry Bentley, Jerry Fitzgerald, Al Bowley, after his return from America. But with a proud fatherly gleam in his eye, no doubt, Sidney remembered... Sing singers, of course, the, the number one was Celia. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't um, picture her as singing with the band at all, but she went to Jack Harrison without my knowledge, and, and gave him an audition. Really? Jack Harris came back to me on the telephone. I ever tell you this? No. Jack Harris came to me back on the telephone and uh, said that he wanted to engage Celia to sing I thought, well, if, if she's going to sing with a band, she'll sing with my band. I keep an eye on her. <laughs> Bye. 
not go boom, boom, buddy, boom, cause I found you. Boom, when you are near it, boom. I could see love in blue, boom, buddy, boom, all around you. Was it at seven or half past eleven or cruising about the Pacific? I only know that I can't let you go. Your effect upon me is terrific. Boom, boom. When we're a bride and groom, oh, will my heart go boom, boom, buddy, boom, cause I love you. The versatile and talented teenage Celia Lipton singing with Dad's orchestra in 1939. She went on to musical comedy starring roles and then gave it all up when she married and went to live in America. She's very busy just now with Pratamons with cancer, you know, big cancer uh, ball and what have you. Bob Hope's coming across for it from California. That's lovely. I know she does a lot of charity work, doesn't she? She does. The biggest one she did, I think, was with, with Elizabeth Taylor, you know, that was the AIDS thing. Aha, uh -huh, right. T tell me, when you came back after the war and uh, you went back into the Grosvenor House, uh, what was the difference in the band then? Well, uh, when I came back, I was in the army, as you know. Yes. And uh, I came back and uh, and reformed the band. I determined we'd have a, re a, a band that was very suited to a restaurant, because the way you have a big band, it really is not restaurant music. It's, it's good dance music, but not restaurant music, where people are sitting eating. Well, I had a, a band with strings and so on. And uh, I know that uh, the people came in and the, the manager said, this, this is absolutely marvelous. You should attract tremendous business. But we didn't. And that's why I changed over again and uh, went back to the big band. Uh, quotes big idea. Apropos, apropos of the big band, I've been invited to accept an honor for the, what they call the big band hall of fame on February 3rd. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, this happening in America is really something. Yes, of course.
Sydney Lipton's orchestra actually recorded in Grosvenor House in the late 1950s. In fact, Sydney Lipton kept the Grosvenor House guests dancing from the early 30s to the stereo years. I wondered how long altogether. I was there, well, yes, I was there probably about 30 odd years. My goodness, that must be a record, surely. It, it, uh, it, it might well be. <laughs> Sidney Lipton, his violin and his orchestra from Grosvenor House, Park Lane, London. But Sidney talking to us from his home in Palm Beach, Florida. My sincere thanks to him and we all wish him good health and happiness. Thank you very much, Sidney. Next week we move a few yards down Park Lane to listen to Jack Jackson's music from the Dorchester Hotel. And in a few minutes after the news, we have more big band sounds here on 88 to 91 FM, which is Radio 2 from the BBC. <laughs>